Hello and welcome to Backstage with Gig Performer. My name is Brett Pontecorvo and we are going to have an awesome stream today. It's been a long time since I've been this excited about a backstage stream. It's going to be amazing. If you are watching right now, do let us know in the chat where you are tuning in from. I know we've got Dave Bolden popping on uh, here from the UK. We're going to have him back on in January uh, to showcase a really cool extension he's been working on. Um, so do stay tuned for that. We've got um, Brian coming in from Orlando, Florida and the 80s Cruise. Got Gig Performer because I saw Dave was using it. Awesome. That's really great, man. So happy to have you here. We've got Magnus from Sweden, of course, gig performer, team member, Nemanja, and Matt Anderson coming in from Columbus, Ohio. Glenn Short, so happy to have you here, man. Uh, always a pleasure. So, um, oh, and Wire Noises as well. So happy to see you here as well. Um, so friends, our question of the day, I know we've been commenting already a little bit, but just out of <clears throat> curiosity, go ahead and let us know in the chat what is the most amount of gigs you have ever played in a single month? Uh, we're going to talk in a second with, with Dave about the, the most number of gigs in one month. Um, but if you've been performing live with Gig Performer or otherwise, what was your, your biggest month where you had the most uh, gigs? We'll, we'll pull some of those comments up on the screen here in just a moment. Uh, before we get into the interview with Dave, though, I want to let you guys know a little bit about what's coming up in January of this year. We have a special guest who is returning, um, Harry Trendle, who, if you were watching a while back, is doing really, really cool um, art. It is it is music. He is a musician, but he is creating some exceptional art, incorporating um, lights and videos um, and uh, stage actors and dancers and orchestras using Gig Performer to power his live setup. And the last time he was here, he went through pedal boards and had a very complicated and robust setup. But he's coming back on, actually, to showcase um, how he has reduced his setup um, to just this, which is really cool. Uh, it looks like there are lots of flashing lights, but the whole setup actually runs with three buttons. Uh, so we're excited to have him on in January. Here's a little picture um, of his light show. So... Um, one more thing before we pop on here. It looks like Dave's maximum gigs in one month is 12. 12 gigs. It's a, it's a heavy load, Dave. Um, we will see if anybody else pops in. If you'd like to contribute, do let us know um, what the most amount of gigs is you've done in one week. Uh, Paul Vargas. Not sure. At least 20. Sounds about right. It's a heavy month. All right. Um, so this week's guest, uh, super excited to welcome on um, Dave Schultz, who is a master musician, a fantastic keyboard player, and is producing some great results. We're going to walk through everything he's doing today, but he's played with bands like the Goo Goo Dolls, Wang Chung, Cherry Curry, The Sweet, Berlin, English Beat, Y'all Can Read. By the way, awesome front page of a website <laughs> um, as well. Um, but Dave is the real deal. He's performing all the time, um, amazing keyboard player, and also uh, a gig performer user. So we are excited to welcome him on to the stream today. Uh, welcome to Backstage. This is Dave Schultz. <laughs> Dave, thanks for being with us. Howdy. How you doing? <laughs> doing good, man. Thanks for being here. Uh, <laughs> so I know we have a million questions, but uh, our good. question of the week inspiration was based on your October. <laughs> Tell us about so, your October of this year. So it must have been time. This is hilarious that we <laughs> asked this question today because in my entire career, the largest month I ever had was literally October of this year. Wow. <laughs> Meaning wow. before that was, it's like before Christ, after Christ. Um, wow. I had 30 gigs in October. Wow. So it started off at 25. And then as I went through, more were being added. And I was already feeling like a bit, I was, you know, I was feeling a bit like a machine. I don't really like to feel that way when I'm doing music, but yeah. I was just doing it every day. And I got, you know, I, I got lucky. That was a lucky month, man. I'll tell yeah. you, but, but I definitely, I won't be doing that every month. That's for sure. It was a lot of it was solo piano gigs, like at hotels and things, mm -hmm. which I love those gigs because it keeps my chops up and yes. you know, you got to, you got to carry the bass, the melody, all of it. 
you know, and I really cherish those gigs, but I took a lot of them in October. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's because people weren't available or, and I, you know, what the circumstances were, but it ended up being 30 gigs. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So yeah, that was, that was, that was bonkers. Yeah. Know, let's, um, let's circle back around to this. Cause I have so many questions about that, but, um, um, for people who haven't checked you out before, maybe have heard your projects, but yeah. don't know who you are, who are you? What do you do? What's your, your, your baseline? Who are you and wh wh what are you up to? So, so short story long, my dad was a conductor of the Philharmonic Orchestra in my hometown of Buffalo, New York. And I basically got the bug from him. Mm -hmm. And sadly, he didn't get to hear me play. He died when I was nine, but I, I started ferociously learning piano like a year after he died. Yeah. And you can look at that any way you want, call it spiritual, call it osmosis, but somehow I got the bug yeah. after he died. And uh, I just, just, I learned really quickly. I was uh, playing, you know, Mozart, after like six months and kind of got into the local scene in Buffalo. I, you know, I worked it really hard, you know, blah, blah, blah. Come to like uh, 1997, Robbie from the Goo Goo Dolls and bass player asked me if I wanted to tour with them. And I was like, absolutely. You know, I had just finished a month long training as a computer programmer and the poor bastard that was training me. It was the first day of, of him not having to train me. And that's the day I got the call. I had to call wow. this guy. And call, hey man, thanks for thanks for training me for a month, but I gotta go. Oh. Ironically, he was very supportive, and I just bought him dinner, you know. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but anyways, I went out. I went out and I played Iris with the Goo Goo Dolls at Woods at the Woodstock reunion. Or actually, it was like a day in the garden. It wasn't really Woodstock, but it was in the same area as Woodstock. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that was like the the sort of uh, gate opener for me. That was 1998, and. I made the move to LA, started hitting the pavement pretty hard. I learned, I learned a hard lesson in LA. Like they didn't care where you came from. I, I thought I was going to be all, you know, came from this, this, this killer band and I would get all the gigs. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> I started from scratch as soon as I got to LA. Yeah. Um, I did get lucky. A, a buddy of mine who was a keyboardist for the band live in the nineties, he got me the, the, the gig with um, English beat. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I, that's kind of the first gig I had in LA. Through that gig with Dave Wakeling, I met a lot of 80s musicians, uh, like Terry Nunn from Berlin, just all these people. And I got kind of immersed in that scene. That's how I ended up in Berlin eventually. Mm -hmm. uh, through Berlin, I ended up in Wang Chung because they were doing a lot of shows with us. You know, it's kind of like a lot of the same people yes. doing these, these shows. And, um, <clears throat> you know, so on and so forth. So it was a really good, everything's happened in, in, in sort of a domino effect. And yeah. um, I've always been a guy that, that took full advantage of every situation. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Probably more than most people. So I'm a very, um, I'm, a, I'm a geek. I like spreadsheets. I'm very analytical and like, you know, I write things down and I'm just very thorough, put it that yeah. way. Yeah, so, I mean, that's- uh, I call it maximum <laughs> Yeah. So what so. was what was it like pre, you know, for, for those of us who are watching who are like, man, this guy's had an amazing career. Um, I guess there's like some amount of serendipity, but like, what was it like getting connected to the Goo Goo Dolls? Like, what were you doing that caused that to occur? Okay, so my honest answer is, uh, okay, so it's it, it's talent for sure. Yeah, I was definitely in the top echelon of keyboardists in Buffalo. And I had a band called CO Jones, where I was the front man as well. And I was very sort of dynamic performer. Mm -hmm. We got popular, but I had kind of this, this bittersweet feeling of like, oh, we're so popular, but I can't really get any more popular in Buffalo. It was kind of nothing against Buffalo. I love I love my hometown, but th there just wasn't more I could do with it. Mm -hmm. And I think Robbie was was a was DJing at a place called the Old Pink in Buffalo, which was sort of like everyone's favorite bar. Mm -hmm. And I would kind of nudge, nudge them every once in a while. Hey, man, if you ever need keyboards, they weren't really a keyboardy band back then. They were more of a power punk band, like three piece, you know. Mm -hmm. But lo and behold, John Resnick started writing songs that required strings and or B3 and stuff. And, you know, it, years later, I was tenacious 
enough that they finally called me. But I mean, I think like to, to answer your question, it's a combination of talent, tenaciousness and patience. Yep. And, and, you know, he was a family friend, so it's not like it was out of the blue. It was, it, you know, if, if there was any band that I would have hooked up with that was popular, it would have been them because they were my hometown buddies. Yep. So it wasn't like it happened out of the blue. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. But I was, <clears throat> I was tenacious. Yeah. <laughs> I kept the guy, you know. Yeah. Um, and so I was very grateful for that. I mean, I literally owe my entire career to that phone call. Mm -hmm. by Robbie Tickback, the bass player from the New Girls. He really did change my life. I For wonder better... how many other people would say something very similar. I'm, I'm, I think a lot of people. Uh, if you talk to... Yeah, yeah I think we'd, we'd hear a lot of stories like that. There's always yeah. one sort of light bolt that ha lightning bolt that happens that, that sort of changes the course you know, yeah. of your life. Yeah. That At was, that point, yeah. you were on, I'm assuming, all hardware. You were, you were playing hardware keys. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was. I had a Korg O one W. Yes. Old school Triton. You know the, the original Triton. I wasn't. That really was my first keyboard. The original Triton. I loved it, man. Me too. At the time. You know, Me too. Um, I was never really an engineer guy. I wasn't really. I didn't have the. Ironically, even though I have a computer information systems degree that I was getting at that time. For some reason, I couldn't connect it with music. It just was a different brain for me. And I didn't, it, I just couldn't like get dive into the Pro Tools and all that stuff. So I was always just a guy that wanted to play and yeah. sing. I just yeah. wanted to get right to the music, you know, a little bit impatient that way. Mm -hmm. So I always was, you know, adamant about having an engineer with me or somebody that could just do that stuff. Yes. Know? So, yeah, that's there's some wisdom. But now, now I'm a little more savvy with it, but I'm not totally savvy with it. Put it mm -hmm. that way. Yeah, it it kind of becomes like a tool to solve your problem, right? Like the tech stuff sure. sort of like fixes the issue, right? Like I need to play cartoon noises. How right. Do, <laughs> how do I do it? I'm um, a guy that's a result based guy. Like, give me what what do I got to do to get this result? Yes. You know, who do I have to call if I can't do it myself? I'll try yes. to do it myself, but if I can't, you know. How much is it worth my time to learn how to do it myself? Is it better to hire somebody to do it? There's all these decisions that go on every day, you know? Yes. So um, this was 98 that you started playing yeah. with Goo Goo Dolls. Yeah. Quite a while. You're still working yeah. a lot. Yeah. How is I've that? Never done what is else. that? Like, so how do you, uh, we're going to talk about gig performer, but I just think this is super sure. relevant. How yeah, do yeah. you become the type of person that your phone is always ringing? Like, like, what is, what is the process of not just having a lucky gig, right? Because there could have been another story where you made that connection, played with the Goo Goo Dolls, and then that was it, right? That could have been your story. Why well, you is that not your story? story? If you want to get a little comedy thrown into this interview, I, did, I actually got fired from the Goo Goo Dolls for being on a show called Taxi Cab Confessions. So, in effect, I was starting from scratch after okay. Goo Goo Dolls. Okay. Wow. Uh, that's actually a big point. And okay. we can, that's a funny story. That's a whole nother conversation. But, but the point is I had this amazing tour. I went from like, you know, zero to 900 knots and like, and then it would, the, the rug was pulled out. Mm -hmm. So by the time I got to LA, I was starting from scratch. I had like maybe $8,000 in the bank, you know? Wow. Yeah. So, so like, like, that's not their fault at all. It was sure. the managerial decision and whatever, nothing yeah. against them. But, um, but like I learned a lot from that experience and I, I learned to work my ass off basically. And, mm -hmm. uh, how do I get, how you're asking me, how does it, why does the phone keep ringing? What it is, is, is what I was talking about earlier about maximizing every situation. If, 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 for example, if I see somebody playing at a venue I've never played at before that I didn't know had music in it, I'm going to make a note in my phone. I'm going to call that venue. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I'm always, I'm always assuming the role of not having any work, mm. even if I have tons of work. Mm. It's a smart set. So I'm always in a hustle mode. Mm -hmm. um, and you got to hang, man. You got to hang with musicians. You, I, I used to live with, I'm not going to name names, but I used to live with a guy that I, I, I think about it in retrospect, but I think he moved in with me because he wanted to get connected. And, but he would never go out with me. He would never go to shows. He would never go meet people. And then one day he's like having a nervous breakdown saying to me, why, how come you never got me any gigs? I go, and it wasn't because he wasn't a good player. 
he just never was never wanted to put the time into hanging with with people you know as you know being a musician you got to be able to hang on the road in like small spaces for a long time mm -hmm. so that's a very important part mm -hmm. uh i would tell musicians that are trying to make it is you got to be able to you can't be sitting in your room in a bubble you got to go out and socialize and, and meet other musicians and be bold and let them know you're available don't don't be afraid you know yeah yeah it is very much too like um <laughs> you know, you kind of make choices about who you call based off of who you want to spend time with, right? Like, I, yeah. within reason, within reason. But um, I remember booking um, booking uh, pit orchestras, um, and there were a couple of folks who I called who were slower to learn, needed more time, sure. but um, constantly on time. Yeah. Um, constantly prepared. And a ton of fun, and those those people, man, hired every time. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, yes, I I I hire. I I run a lot of ten piece bands, funk soul stuff, and I'm yeah. all about the hang and like being on time. I may pick somebody that maybe not be the best player on the planet, but he's but but he or she is is amazing to be around. Yeah, like that's very important, you know. Yeah, for sure. Um, amazing tidbits i'm like there's so much gold here so okay. fast forward a bit here you ended up in gig performer in 2020 is that that true roughly i think so yeah 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 so you know it's funny i'm so i'm so into it now that i forget when i started using it but i understand um, i actually watched one of your videos man Yours, it was actually the thing that sold me oh wow there you go i love it yeah, yeah um, but it's about four years i would say um I had joined a Journey tribute band out of San Jose, with which had great musicians in it that I admired. Actually, Uriah Duffy was one of them, and mm -hmm. uh, he's a really bass player. Um, and basically, that that became my that tribute band. Since it wasn't so high profile, and we only played once in a while, mm -hmm. that tribute band was my learning curve for gig performer. Wow! I, I used the, that that material to learn how to. How to do this. Wow. Use this software. There's there's a cool tidbit in there too because it you you know you were like you weren't just like playing with it right you were like applying it to something in the real real I had a job. to see how it <laughs> went right there you go <laughs> yeah there you go I um, had to use it what were you using before that did you well okay like I was definitely a hardware guy um, okay. in Berlin for many many years I was using a Triton Extreme and a microcord. I still use the microcord. Uh -huh. It's got it's some great sounds beast. on it. Oh, it's a little beast. It's good for Berlin because it's the very uh, EDM type sounds. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, um, so uh, I was always keyboard guy. Never had, never wanted main stage. Never wanted. I, I just was. You know what it is? I think I just maybe it's part of my personality or some kind of psychological thing. But I just never want things to go wrong on stage. I was always afraid of something breaking down with the computer and I used to see our, I used to watch our drummer in Berlin stress out like at every sound check because he had to worry about the computer and I said I don't want I don't want to do that like I want to enjoy this you know like mm -hmm. you know I want to be able to just rock and, and enjoy the music and not worry about a USB cable falling out or something you know mm -hmm. or just whatever weather heat overheating anything you know mm -hmm. so but I had used main stage for a couple of things. Like I did, we did a, a big David Bowie tribute um, after he died at the Roxy in Hollywood once. We did some Peter, Peter Gabriel tributes where I was using main stage and it worked great. But I, the, the, the reason for the switch, I won't even call it a switch because I wasn't using a lot of that stuff. But mm -hmm. the reason I got into it was because me being anal about the quality of my sounds I always wanted to use programs like Omnisphere, you know, Trillion, Keyscape, these heavy CPU intensive programs. And I wanted to use a lot of them at one time. Mm. And this is the first program. I'm not trying to sell it, but it's Gig Performer was the first opportunity for me to use those, those, those VSTs wow. and not worry about them crashing. That's, wow. that's the bottom line. That's, that's literally why I use it because mm -hmm. <laughs> it doesn't crash and I can, and I've actually gotten hired more because of it. Interesting. Because I'm getting 
the client closer to the record than he was than than he thought he could get. You know, Take because you're able to use the tools that produce the results. Is that exactly? Yeah. Um, whereas maybe before, I would have to try to try to recreate it as best as possible on these hardware synths, which is still possible and great. And there are there's so many great keyboards out there. It just made it a lot easier, which made the workflow quicker, which gets the results faster, which gives me more work. It all builds on itself. Yeah. Wow. Which is great for me because I like work. <laughs> I don't know any musicians that don't. That's not true, actually. I do know a couple. <laughs> yeah, you know. Uh, it's easy uh, yeah. Wow. Okay. So what was it like? just in terms of like learning curve for you because the switching from main stage means your whole your whole paradigm has shifted really yeah right? and let me, again let me re re-emphasize i wasn't really a main stage user i used it occasionally gotcha yep uh but yeah i i learned how to use it and i could set up my my, my stuff but i think that the it was just the pandemic definitely helped uh not to take away from gig performer but it was definitely a time for me to dig in you mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. and it was it, it 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 was great because it enabled me to really get into something new, and it was exciting for me. You know, I was like, mm -hmm. oh my god, I can I can use a piano from from Keyscape, and I can use a lead from from you know six. I can do six instances of Omnisphere, and, and nothing's crashing. You know, like I love that, mm -hmm. and I was I learned it during the pandemic, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my time off. I I kind of this is kind of how I roll. Like I'll book a gig. I'm a guy that books a gig without having a band, and then I and I work towards the the date. I love and that. It. Helped, I like that pressure. I love, I love it. it. Um, <laughs> so what I did, I had the journey gig with these guys, and I said, "Okay, I got to learn this shit by like you know March third or whatever." Yeah. So I, I just knew I had to have it by then, and it was it was great. I was like, I got it down. Oh man, <laughs> I love it. We actually have a question <laughs> coming in from Dave. Um, Looking at your photo, your studio photo on your website, is that an Open Labs yeah. Nico in the corner? Was that running VS? Oh, well, that's not. That's not my. That's the. That's the Mint Studio behind the Mint Club in LA. The, the, my actual studio is on my website. If you go to the live section, that's the picture of my studio. Gotcha, gotcha. All right, guys. Okay, so that is. A Nico. I do own the Nico though. The Miko. Um. That is my keyboard. So. You're in Gig Performer. You're using it right now for two different bands, three different bands, or are you, uh, are you totally okay, so software? I'm, what are you using it in? I'm using it for Berlin okay. completely. Mm -hmm. I'm using it for Wang Chung. Mm -hmm. I'm using it for Fastball. Mm -hmm. And I'm using it for Sweet. Okay. Uh, and the Journey Tribute Band, which I, me and another guy sort of split that gig. Okay. Um, so I'm using it for five bands, but I'm actually going to use it for my solo album shows which i'm going to be doing next year i'm working awesome. on a new record, but that'll awesome. be used for that for sure um and you're saying Pretty it's a solo a solo album show because it's just you playing or because it's your album no i mean when i i'm gonna do a solo record in this next year january gotcha. through march and yep. i'm gonna use this use it to play that live basically. awesome awesome well can yeah. you show us some of what you're doing can we pop over to gig performer and, yeah. and have a look at what's going on Oh. All right, yeah. So uh, this is Berlin. Yeah, I'll give you uh, you know a couple things here. Give us the tour. Let's take Metro for okay. example. Uh, everyone knows that song, so I figured it'd be an easy one to start with. Yeah. So I'll go into wiring mode here. Sure. And this is a simple setup, nothing elaborate. It's too. It's too. Okay. So long story short, with Berlin, like I told you before, I was using the Triton Extreme for many, many years. Mm -hmm. Now. Some people may be like, why are you using that? Well, Terry Nunn always wanted to have a more modern take on the old classics. I mean, you know, I could have gotten a Prophet 5. I could have gotten, you know, all this other stuff. But I was using the Triton because at that time, it's what I had. It, it's the tool that I had at my disposal. I didn't have 15 keyboards like I do now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and I made it work, you know, and it was great. It was actually a fun, amazing, amazing keyboard, and it, it did the job. So Triton Extreme finally came out with a VST version. Mm -hmm. So I actually hired my friend Paul Vargas, who I think is on here right now, to program. I gave him my Triton. And I basically gave him the file. I said, hey, man, can you can you create all these programs that I've been 
spending years developing with Berlin and just move it over to the VST version. And he did that for me. That's an wow. example of me being uh, a delegator. Like, I don't feel like doing this for three weeks. I'm going to yes. hire somebody that does it better than me. Yes. And Paul's a great programmer. So he did that for me. And so I just basically, you know, so on the left side here, you can see the Triton Extreme. Mm -hmm. This is a recreation of, of the years I put into the actual keyboard. Yep. Gotcha. So there's splits here, like, you know, mm -hmm. chorus. This is string patch. And then the bell sound. You probably can't see my fingers because it's too far to the left, but it's, it's we can see it on the screen though. <laughs> yeah, so that's that's like the bells. Okay. And then you know, and then the solo in the middle. Um, you know. That's Omnisphere. It's a killer patch. I basically took a preset and tweaked it. Um, um, here's a question for you. So with with the Triton Extreme VST, yeah, having played on both the VST version and on the actual hardware board, do you notice a sound difference? You know what? It's so close. I mean, okay, th th this is a whole other discussion that people have. Like. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of guys are analog analog geeks. They want to do everything old school, which mm -hmm. I totally respect, right? Yeah. Do you have the crew to carry all that stuff around? Do you have the crew to handle it when it breaks down? Yeah, right. In a moment. I'm a practical guy. I want to get the job done with the least amount of stress. If I have to lose 10% of a sound mm -hmm. quality-wise to get, to get the job done, which is probably most people aren't going to notice, I'm going to do that, okay? <laughs> Now, if if I'm in, if I have the luxury of being in a studio recording a solo album, I'll I'll use those old keyboards. You sure. know, I'll do that. Uh, like Chromio does, for example. You know, mm -hmm. I love that. Um, but Thomas Dolby actually kind of reaffirmed my notions, and he kind of said the same thing in an interview. And he was mm -hmm. like, you know, what? the sounds are so close these days. If you didn't know the other one existed, would you would you know? <laughs> would Probably you even know? Not. So Some like people say yeah. yes. the, 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 certain uh... people like B, B3, like B3 is, 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 is an example of where you, where the real thing is the real thing. Sure. You know, yeah. but, but I, 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 I firmly believe that if you create a sound that, that, that touches people and connects in some way, then it's valid. Mm -hmm. You know, if you can do that on a soft synth, cool. Mm -hmm. Um, and like I said, like, you know, I just started using this stuff a couple of years ago. So, you know, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, he recreated these sounds for me, and and it, and it, it, it it's you know like for example, this Omnisphere patch for this solo here, mm -hmm. I love this sound. I mean, this is better than what I had before. It's gnarly, you know. I got a little distortion on it. Mm -hmm. um, so that's that's what that is right there. Mm -hmm. um, and I just tweaked that sound. It's a preset. I'm not gonna lie, but I tweaked it. I just I added some distortion. I kind of detuned it a bit just to make it a little edgy slightly. Mm -hmm. And yeah. uh, that's all I needed, man. Like I said, it's workflow. I, this didn't take me more than 15 minutes, you know, like yes. I might've spent an hour before doing this. Yes. So that's kind of my point. Yeah. And it's, 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 I mean, you, you said this yourself earlier, it was all results driven, right? Like you were desiring yeah. to get a sound, you found something close, tweaked what you had to tweak, and then you, you moved on because you were trying to get a particular result. Well, yeah, and also because, not not to make a joke out of it, but I have a lot of work and there's a lot of things I got to do. So it's like, I don't yeah. have time to spend hours and hours. Yeah. But like, but like me hiring my buddy Paul to do that programming was a totally worthy expense because he's doing that while I'm doing other things. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. it's the kind of the way I run sessions. You know, I'll, I'll send a a track out to a drummer and, and I'll be working on keyboards. And by the end of the day, the drummer sent me back the drum track and I got the drum track. So mm -hmm. that's a good use of time. In my opinion, it's great use of time. That's just efficient working. You know? It's amazing. Yeah. Um, are you using one rack space per song? Most of the time is that, uh, I know that's up? probably overkill. Not necessarily. I guess it depends, you know? Okay. Um, so these are, I just th in this particular situation, it's not always like this. I just named the rack spaces after the songs. Yeah, sure, sure. Because, again, for my brain to to make it easier for me to to move fast, mm -hmm. 
and get what I need done done. It was just easier for me to do it that way. Mm -hmm. And I know there's a million ways to do it. Mm -hmm. um, just take my breath away, for example. Mm -hmm. You know, it, this is a split. So this is a layered patch. It's a choir, a string, you know, and then I use the I use the microcorg on top to do the um, the pads. So I do use a real keyboard live. I use for Berlin. I use one microcorg on top, and I use this Nord stage on the bottom mm -hmm. to run gig performer. I don't use any sounds on the Nord stage, but the reason I chose the Nord stage as a controller, as opposed to like an Arturia or something else, yeah. is because it's a great keyboard as a backup. Mm -hmm. Meaning the sounds on the Nord stage, you can get anything on it. So like, yep. if the if the shit hits the fan, I can use the Nord stage on the gig. Um, has it? No, that's my point. It has really? not ever hit the fan. That's so amazing. that's. I mean, I'm not I'm not just blowing smoke, but it, gig performer literally has never crashed on me. I'm using a Mac, I'm using a Mini Mac 2018 mm -hmm. that's dedicated to it. Um, and I use. I use this cool. Can you see this? Uh, here, I'll make you bigger. Um, oh yes, sure. talk about this. I forgot all about the key Largo. This is a really cool piece of gear. Can you can you explain how this works? Well, I'm sorry that I don't have it set up like I would no, with the live no, tape, right. but I'm gonna just explain it as best as I can. It's all good. So what what my setup is is basically I'll just give you the Berlin example because that's the yeah. easiest thing right now. Yeah. So the, the North Stage is is controlled bot is controlling gig performer mm -hmm. um, via one USB -AP cable in the back. Mm -hmm. goes into here. Can you see that? Yep. So this is, a, this is cool. This is a key Largo, but radial. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the best keyboard players in LA, in my opinion, is Matt Rohde. And he actually told me to get this and he hooked me up with the guy and got me a deal. And thank you, Matt. Um, it, it was a game changer for me because it's, you can, you can control USB cable from, from computer sounds and also, mm -hmm three stereo keyboards and it's got midi on the side old school <laughs> so yes sound guys love me with this because all they have to do is do left and right xlr out to the house they don't have to give me a di or anything i control everything mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So in berlin i have my microcorg in one of these channels mm -hmm. i have big performer running in here mm -hmm. in this green section and i can run this out to a monitor mm -hmm. and this goes out to the house and it's, it's so easy. I just, I just stick this on the side. I have a touch screen mm -hmm. from Amazon. It's like a hundred bucks. Nice. Nice. Super easy. Yeah. Um, and then I have the mini Mac attached to all this and that's it. That's, that's the setup. It's literally one USB cable from the stage four to the radial one USB cable from the radial to the mini Mac audio cable from, you know, instrument cable from my microcorg to the radial mm -hmm. XLR out to the house. That's it. <laughs> and how long, <laughs> how long would you say roughly it takes you to set up? 15 minutes. It's not bad. It's really, it's really great. I would say, you know, let's be honest, a half hour, but I mean, pulling the keyboard out, blah, blah, blah. That's shit. But I'm saying sure. actual, if, it, if it's, if it's on a stand and connecting things, I've done throw and go gigs and festivals with it. And I did it in 10 minutes. Wow. You know, because we're just talking about connecting the dots at that point. Yes. Yeah. It's a little nerve wracking to make sure the computer works and everything. But I, what I do is I set it up and then I put it in sleep mode until the gig, till like a half hour before the gig. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Yes. Yep. Um, so yeah, that's what I do. Amazing. I love it. Um, <clears throat> Okay, so you're doing you label things in the way that makes the most sense. Do you perform in set list view or do you perform in in rack? Yes, list? you do. Yes, right? oh yeah, I, I definitely sometimes in cover. If I'm doing a cover gig, I might do rack space mode, but I like set list mode. Okay, so here are my rack spaces for Berlin. Mm -hmm. You know, it's I always have a blank. Yeah, it's a good idea. So in case I got to use the Nord, mm -hmm. uh, I have a blank section on each song. Mm -hmm. Okay, to be able to go through it. These are the various songs, blah, blah, blah. Uh, set list mode here. Here's, mm -hmm. I, I chose a short, a short show, like a 45 minute show, just so it's easier to see. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and I have it set up on the Nord to switch patches uh, on the keys on the Nord. Okay. So I don't ever actually have to, I don't ever actually have to use this touchscreen unless I'm in an emergency. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, it's not on right now, but but. And do you, you, know, you just use uh, the global MIDI mapping, like like a yes. node on? Okay. Like right up here, like I go global MIDI, you know. Gotcha. Sometimes I use the bottom two keys. Okay. You know, and then it's like this. See what I mean? Yep. I'm hitting the lower key right now. So I'll use the bottom two keys, which don't have any sounds assigned to them. Because mm-hmm. I, I use I make sure I use a 73 note keyboard. I mean, for Berlin, I don't need 88 keys. It's let's face it. I mean, it's, this isn't classical <laughs> piano. <laughs> That's so, right. That's I mean, right. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. you know, all respect to Berlin because it's very produced. The parts are super important. And but most of it's in this this middle range, you know, mm-hmm. so I, I like using the the lower two keys left and right. So mm-hmm. like I use the lower E, you know, E to go back, F to go forward. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's pretty much it. I mean, you know, yeah, your rack spaces are all empty. Is that just because it's not needed? Or do you not like to control things when you play? Or how does that how does that work for you? What do you mean? Rack, what, what do you, how oh, are they just empty? meaning like you, you don't use any widgets. Oh, yeah. Well, for example, I, you know, there's on the Journey Tribute group, there's a widget I use on uh, on Faithfully where yeah. it's just piano. And then I, I kind of turn it up. I add the pad on the widget. Yes. Gotcha. That's simple. That's a simple use of a widget, like bare bones. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I mean, maybe this comes from me being a keyboard player more than a computer guy. It works for me live. I mean, mm-hmm. yeah, you know. Absolutely. Um, well, it's not always needed, right? You know, but but then sometimes it's very needed. So I didn't know if this was just this band you don't use widgets, or if it was on the whole you don't like to turn knobs when you're playing. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm this. I try. I guess I try to to make the sound going in out of the box what I need. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, um, I've always been a firm. I like space in music. I don't like to overload the frequency range. I mean, you know, if there's a piano, I'm going to play a piano. If it's a, I'm not a guy that layers too much. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, so maybe, you know, some of your guys on here, they have these elaborate setups, which I, I love it, but it's like, this is basically for me, a way to get these sounds out mm-hmm. and powerful sounds. You know, I can use the, the, the VSTs that I want to use, Yep. which is, which is uh, to me, enough of a, of a great thing to use a, a certain software yeah you know um, even though i'm actually not just a question a for you i'm curious because this I feel like is kind of on what you're talking about here do you yeah, update yeah. things once you build them or are you a set and forget it guy like have you ever changed oh, these patches or do you do you kind of iterate them or oh no i'm always updating i mean it's, it's like at rehearsal we might want to change something i'll update it you know um, mm-hmm. i always keep it fresh i don't update uh, like a lot, I didn't update the computer. Right. <laughs> right. I wasn't sure if that was going to be a good move, but you know, I update sounds for sure. Absolutely. Okay. Like what I did was, for example, on the, on the Berlin stuff, a lot of it's Omnisphere and a lot of it's Triton yep. uh, from Korg. Mm-hmm. So, uh, the, their outputs are, are, are very different. So like I have to, uh, you know, I make sure I have a mixer in each one so I can, you know, see how. Yes, the Triton is lower. Well, the Omnisphere is lower and the Triton's higher because their outputs are fundamentally different. So I went in there and made everything level so that there are, our front house guy would be very happy with me. You know, so mm-hmm. it's not like jumping around and all that. Mm-hmm. That was a, that was a big thing um, mm-hmm. that that really was an improvement over the old setup. Yeah. Okay. Um, here's another Having question the- for you. This so um, we've got another one coming in from Facebook, but this one I'm just curious. So Berlin's a touring band. Yeah. But you also play a lot locally. Which one Not is really. better? Oh, oh, you mean like my gigs locally? Yeah. Oh, um, you know what, man? I'm a music, I'm a music, uh, lifer. I like all of it. I mean, yeah. I, I, like I said, I really love playing the hotel gigs where I'm just playing piano only. Yeah. Because it, it really keeps my chops up. I mm-hmm. really love those gigs. Mm-hmm. Uh, like I, you know, and I, I do a lot of occasional duets with female singers, which is a lot of fun. You know, I have this funk band called Dave Schultz and the Funk Dolls. You've seen the videos. Yeah, and they're a lot of fun. And, you know, I mean, come on, I'm not going to lie. Like, it's my Robert Palmer fantasy. So, you know, if, if Addicted to Love had never come out, the Funk Dolls would not exist. But, <laughs> rest oh, in peace. Wow. Yeah, okay, cool. Anyways, 
I hope he's looking down on me with with pride. But um, except my girls can play. He had mannequins. Okay, they weren't doing shit. Anyways, um, he's looking down me. He's looking down me, going, "You bastard." <laughs> but but uh, I I have a lot of those girls. They're all super talented in, in the funk dolls. I make mean, you know, they're they're great each each and every one of them. But they um. The couple of the singers I use for duet gigs, which is a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. So um, a situation like that, I'll use like a, a Yamaha MODX keyboard, which is just what I call a great one-stop shop keyboard. It's got a little bit of everything. Not every sound is the best, but it's good enough, meaning it's actually better than good enough. I mean, I love the Yamaha sounds. Mm -hmm. So that's an example where I don't use gig performer on a gig. I'll, I'll just use that as a keyboard and I'll just, I'll just sing and play on that thing only. And I love it. Um, basically the montage, you know, mm -hmm. um, but, but for the touring gigs, I use gig performer, um, and I'll probably get deeper, deeper into like what you're talking about with widgets and stuff on my solo record, because that's going to be a lot more deeper editing happening on that, on, the, on mm -hmm. those tunes, yeah. you know? Um, yeah. so I will, if you, if you talk to me in six months, I might have a different answer. Yeah. <clears throat> well, hopefully everything continues to evolve. Okay. So I've yeah. got a question coming in, but then I, I also want to see. Um, you were showing me a bunch of sample triggering that you do, but yes, I yes. have a question for you first uh, from a Facebook user who wants to know, number one, do you use a stream deck? And number two, do you use one computer or do you offload FX to a second computer? One computer. Yeah. Just a mini. Mic. Yeah. So like I said, uh, at this stage in the game, I'm doing all the effects in the VST before it goes out. Yes. Uh, so I try to make that sound as tight as possible before I even, before yep. it even leaves the radial, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now I could do that. And I'm, like I said, I might be doing that in the future. Just mm -hmm. haven't done it. Thus far. Yep. And the, you know, at the end of the day, like if the client isn't happy, then I, I obviously have to change what I'm doing. Right. But so far everybody's been happy with what I've been doing. Yeah. Um, the sample triggering, which I'll show you in a minute. Yeah. I actually improved upon what they had been doing. So whatever yeah. I did was good. <laughs> yeah. Well, so, the samples you played for me were like, <laughs> they, I mean, they were super high quality, right? They, yeah. It's, Want me to load that up? Yeah. Yeah. Go, go ahead and load that up and then we'll, we'll go from there. But um, also okay. I didn't even know, well, I don't want to jump the gun here. That's okay. But, um, or I'm like, yeah, but uh, basically like, you know, depending on what you need to do for what gig you're using gig performer to get the higher quality sounds with right. the stability. And if you're playing, you know, a few sounds, then you're not using it, but for your touring, you're using gig performer because you get the higher quality. Yeah. So I guess my, my point is a lot of my work is done in the VST. Yep. Does that yep. make sense? Yep. Uh, now mid, the MIDI stuff will be done in gig performer. Like, like if I want to turn on a sustain or turn off a sustain or, or you know, where those things go on the keyboard, all that stuff is a gig performer, which yeah. by the way, I love, I love, I love, 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 love this, the, this whole thing. Like just this, I love this. Yeah. Why do you love it? The way that you have this organized, they have this organized is genius. And I, you know, um, what, that what, made my life exponentially easier. What about it made your life easier? What are you doing there? That's uh, just, just being able to change octaves quickly to you know hold a sustain on a certain note and not a certain note instead of going to, into sub menus on a keyboard mm. to do the same thing it's all here in one section mm -hmm. uh you know learning midi you know mm -hmm. top note bottom note all the things that we all know how to do as keyboard players but just took longer to do yes in a, in a, in a keyboard um you know i i can show you with the with the sample triggering, how I used the transpose section. Okay, cool. Um, so can you give us, why are you using samples? What is the job? What band are you doing? Give us, give us the lowdown okay. and then show us inside what's happening. All right. So this is, okay. So I play in a band called Sweet. It's actually the Steve Priest Sweet. Steve Priest was one of the founders of Sweet. And sadly he died a while back, but they continued to play. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to get into that discussion about that because that's for fans and whatever, but I'm going to just tell you what I do. So um, the, his band that he had been touring with, the drummer and the bass player, been with him 25 years. Wow. Since Steve Priest died, he, he was a bass player, by the way. 
the former keyboard player took over for Steve on bass, which is what opened the door for me to come in on keyboards. So half of my job as keyboard player for Sweet, I call it playing half keyboards. So my right hand is doing keyboards, mm -hmm. but the left hand's triggering samples. The reason we're triggering samples is because Sweet had very tight, almost queen-like backing vocals. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah, we could do that live. We all we all sing over it live, but but it's there's just a certain tightness and and pop sensibility to those things that that need to be like the record for it to cut for it to for it to pop live mm -hmm. and i respect that you know like to, some people might say that's cheating but i don't really agree i think that you do what you got to do to get to get the sound you want to get that's just my opinion that's how i operate yeah so i really just following orders man i'm a hired guy <laughs> so what they, they used to use an mpc 1000 to trigger the samples which you had to put, put an old school sd card in there and you know, Steve, the guy who was the keyboard player, had meticulously recorded those samples with a guy named Joe Retta, who's a great singer, was the singer of Sweet at the time, and a guy named Dave Jenkins, who was the engineer. So they did a really, those samples that I played you last week are really, really high quality recordings of, of Joe Retta's voice, doubled, tripled, mm -hmm. et cetera, it's all different harmonies. So I'm basically playing his samples. Um, I'll give you an example. I'll give you one everybody knows. Yeah. I'll show you how this is set up. So this is Love is Like Oxygen. Can you see that? Yep. Uh, so what I did was, I didn't even know that the Logic sampler was in Gig Perform. It must have grabbed it. It must have just grabbed it when it was doing the scan. But I used Logic's, I used Apple sampler. Mm -hmm. Wait, so, I think it's because it's Apple. But I didn't know about this till you showed me. Isn't that funny? Yeah. So I have a folder on my... Uh, well, I won't. I don't want to get out of the screen, but on my desktop, there's a folder, literally on the desktop, mm -hmm. of sweet samples only. So mm -hmm. I have a folder there, sweet samples. I just like them on the desktop. That's just me. Yeah. Um, sure. um, I have a copy of it on my hard drive as well, and in Google Drive. But I like having them on the desktop. So each of these. So there's four here, right? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna play you the first one. Okay. Love is like oxygen. Second one. Well, let me, let me open this up so you can see. <laughs> First one. Love is like oxygen. C. Second one. C sharp. Too hard. D. Not enough and you're gonna die. D sharp. Love gets you high. <laughs> so <laughs> those are referencing the folder on my desktop with yep. those samples. So yep. each of these, for example, this one, you can see it right there. Oxygen mm -hmm. one wave. Uh, you know, yep. oxygen two way, blah, blah, blah. And the key is th the mixer. The fact that I can mix these all. Now, these are all level right here mm -hmm. because they just happen to be good. But on other ones, <laughs> check out this baby. Check out little Willie. <laughs> oh, my goodness. The, the, I'm going to move the arrow with the, with the sample. Okay. Watch. I'm sorry. <laughs> go hop, but you can't push Willie around. Willie won't go. Try telling everybody, but oh no, little Willie Willie won't go hop. Modulation. Little Willie Willie won't go hop. So on and so forth. You get it. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. This out. Uh, this may look a little ridiculous, but I, I'll tell you why I did it this way. Yeah. Thank God you had a 32. Thank God they had a 32 two channel option on the mixer. I think that's the highest one they have. But you can always stack them. But you know, yeah, I basically wanted to be able to mix each thing. So there are times when certain samples may need to be louder. The way he had it set up on the original MPC 1000 was he had two outputs going into vocal samples and then two outputs going to sound effects. Hmm. Like for example, this one. Gone, right? Mm -hmm. So that might need to be louder in certain situations. So, you know, like, so this is all the songs basically. Yeah. Um, you know, everyone knows this one. And the man in the back said, Everyone attack, and it turned into a ballroom blitz. And the girl <laughs> in the corner said, Boy, I want to warn you, it'll turn into a ballroom blitz. Ballroom blitz. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, that's a fun gig. But, but, 
but getting back to the gig itself, it's a little bit tricky. I've never ever done a gig like this. Like this is something that was like mind blowing. Like I had to like, I had to learn how to play the keyboards with one hand and trigger these samples. Not all of them land on the beat one. Some of them land on beat 1.5. Like, yeah, let, let me give you, I wish you could see my, my hands here, but well, I can make you bigger. Hold on. Um, I can, but that's yeah. the point. I'm not trying to brag, but the point is it's tricky because you got to hit the sample right in time or else it's going to derail the whole production. Like, you know, yeah. you don't want to jump the gun on the samples, right? Right. <laughs> it's like, everyone's going to know. Right. Yes. <laughs> yes. So that's, that's an interesting. So gig. what was but practicing not... like for you then? Like you're prepping for this gig, your samples are in, now you're going to practice. How, how are you refining well, that? Is it just trying to it line it up? Me, and... Yeah. They gave me a live video that was pretty accurate when I first started. Okay. So I had this quick time video and I would literally play since the samples are samples, they can't change. I was able to play with the live video in time and it was in sync, but it was still, it still was a took me time to get it down for sure, man. Like it was definitely tricky, but yeah. now I got it I'm with them a, a while. So yeah. Yeah. And it sounds killer live. You know, the band is great, great musicians. And, um, yeah, it's one of my favorite gigs for sure. Oh, I love that. We'll be doing a lot of playing in, in 2024. Say, say that again. We'll be doing a lot of shows in 2024. Awesome. Um, why why did you end up using the MIDI in blocks to separate your um? Sorry, let me back up. Uh, you okay. know, a, sam a sampler usually has a way to have a sound on each key. So what made it beneficial for you to use multiple samplers and multiple MIDI in blocks? Was that a visual workflow uh, thing? I, could, I wanted to have this mixer. I like this mixer. You wanted the mixer. Oh, that's, that's, that, that is the, that's your answer. Well, there you go. I yeah, mean, it makes sense. I know, I know it sounds, okay, there's nothing being mixed here. You can, it's all level. Yeah. But I like, I, I, I have, I have, this is my default suite file, mm -hmm. um, which is all set to, to zero. Like it's set to the same level. Mm -hmm. I always keep one like that. And then I have a copy that's used for different gigs. Yep. So I'll copy it each time and then I'll, I'll tweak it for the room. Mm -hmm. Does that makes sense. Yep. Uh, like for example, if I need, you know, like a oh, oh, great example, Fox on the run, this thing. <laughs> that's gotta be loud, dude. Like if that's not loud enough, I got to turn that shit up. Right. Yeah. But I don't want to have it tweaked the same way for every venue. So I have a copy that's all level, like you're seeing now. Yep. You know, all of my level, but then I have, you know, I'll have one called, you know, the, the Fox Theater of Detroit, and that'll be that tweak. Gotcha. So I go into the Fox Theater, I just load that program. Yeah, I love it. I love It'll it. Save you time. <laughs> yeah, well, absolutely. Especially if you know you're coming back. Um, Dave Bolden just wrote in, wants to know: Are you playing these samples to click, or do you split them up so a bit of tempo drift doesn't matter? Ah, yeah, that's a good question. So uh, our drummer Richie Anori is very adamant about playing not to a click. Mm -hmm. So this is just his personal preference, and I respect it. He's got a lot of good reasons for it. It it drove me nuts a little bit. Um, because you know, the, the natural thing that people would want to do is play to a click so that there's, I w if we had a click, I wouldn't have to trigger these samples. Right. Right. We'd, we'd be on the track. Yes. But they, they're, they want it that way for various reasons. So I'm not going to argue with them and I'm cool with it, you know, mm -hmm. and I do kind of get it. There's an energy thing. There's this, there's an energy thing involved with just doing it live. Um, and I always have to have a touch sensitive keyboard so I can, beep, 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 you know, get, get, dig into it a little more sometimes. Yes. But, um, the answer is the boss is my, is, my boss is the drummer, dude. There you go. <laughs> there you go. So, so I'm assuming that for the most part, you know, the band is never radically out of time. Like, no, the, no, it sounds great. Yeah. So actually, it's, yeah. So when, it's, but it's the not. samples are in a specific tempo. The samples are always the same speed. So they have to be pretty darn accurate for the samples to work. These guys have been doing it 25 years. So if that right. helps you understand, I mean, when you're a musician, you got muscle memory. And yep. You know, they've been doing it so long that 
it's very rare that I would be hitting a sample and it goes like way faster. You know, it's right. Super rare. I, I'm, I'm swimming in the middle. Like I kind of want to, I, I, I would like to have a track so I could play more keyboards, to be honest, but sure. I'm not like in, in a way, since I was forced to do it this way, I kind of liked it. It was fun. It was kind of geeky and like, yeah. it's, a, it's kind of fun, you know, like I don't mind doing it. It's just something different. It's a new, it's a new chapter for me. I've never done it before. Yeah. You know? I love that. And actually, again, it, it forced me to create this madman patch, you know, and now I, it, it, again, it was an exercise in learning how to use this program and get deeper mm -hmm. into it. So. Yep. Yep. I love it. It makes sense too, like the workflow with the mixer. It's way faster to adjust in a mixer than it would be to go into a sampler and change individual levels in a sampler that you can't see. Like, yeah. The, the workflow makes sense. And um, this didn't take that long. All I did was copy and paste a bunch of times. Yeah. I just right, copied right. and pasted. I laid them into the mixer. You know, I would... And I just assigned the keys, you know, in, 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 um, this mode, you know? Mm -hmm. Yep. So that was, that was made it really easy. And if I had done that in, in the Apple sampler mode, it would be easy, but just a little bit more tricky. Mm -hmm. So I just feel like it was easier doing it this way. Yeah. Again, and what are you using thing. for your piano sounds? It... Oh, well, the piano is, um, Keyscape all the way, man. Mm -hmm. I use... I love the bright piano, the rock piano. I don't really mess with Keyscape. I mean, it was Jim Wilson making those sounds and he's like the master, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I love, like, no, again, Nord as a backup is cool because I, I can use the piano and the Rhodes and the Suite is very um, old school. It's B3, Whirly, Piano, Moog. Mm -hmm. I can do the whole gig on the Nord um, yep. sounds. Yep. So, what I'll do often, I can just use the Nord as my keyboard. Mm -hmm. Gig Performer is being triggered from an Arturia Key Lab. No, excuse me. It's a little guy. Hold on. <laughs> I use this. I use this for the triggering the samples. Oh, yeah. Is that the beat step? Key step? Key step. Sorry, I forgot the name. Yeah. Yeah. So. That. Sean Weitzman is my good buddy who works at, what's up, Sean? I'll show this to you one day so you can say hello. <laughs> Anyways, he, he hooks me up with Arteria products. Anyways, that's a great, that's a great sampler trigger, triggerer. It's got old school MIDI on it, which is cool in case you need it. I just, my left hand is doing the Arteria and the right hand's on the Nord. Mm -hmm. So I don't use, I don't use Gig Performer on the Nord for, for this. For this gig, yeah, yeah. I just use it for the samples. Yeah. Um, I love it. It ma makes a ton of stuff. Uh, the um, uh, a couple more questions. We're we're almost up on an hour here, which time goes oh, fast, man. doesn't it? I t I That's told you. I was like, it's gonna go, it's gonna go in a what's moment. My, what's my favorite sweet cereal? Cocoa Pebbles, dude. Very important. I love it. Um, <laughs> if anybody else has questions for Dave, uh, maybe favorite dinner. I don't know. Any any questions at all for Dave? Um, while we have him here, um, do pop them in the chat. Um. I want to briefly, you mentioned you've played a bit with Trey Gunn. Is that true no. or did I? No, you didn't. Did no. I get that wrong? That wasn't you. I would you. love to. I would love to. Well, there you go. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm putting it out there. Maybe I've just made the connection. Oh, man. <laughs> um, do you want to talk a bit about your album that's coming up um, this year? Yeah, so... so uh, I did an album in 2009 called Connect, which I was super proud of. It was like kind of like my hero album. I, I got a bunch of people that I just looked up to to play on it. Mm -hmm. A lot of favorites, like Daniel and Wah was on it playing pedal steel. Tony Levin's on bass. Mm -hmm. Bernard Fowler from the Stones is singing like opera on it. Believe it or not, wow. guys like Randy Cook, Roby Benerji engineered it. Anyways, I just I was so proud of that record. It's on. You can hear it on Spotify, iTunes, on my website. Blah blah blah. It's mm -hmm. called Connect. Anyways, I did that in two thousand nine. Super proud of it. You know, I made a big push at the time. I just didn't have the, the machine, you know, I call it the machine money when, when a band signed or whatever, they had the, the machine behind them to promote properly, right? Mm -hmm. I didn't have that kind of juice. So, you know, I started to chart on college radio, but like I ran out of money. I couldn't, I couldn't afford it anymore at the time. So I just always felt like that record should have gotten heard more. You know, some people I really looked up to in the industry thought it was great. 
Um, so I just feel like I need to make a part two to that okay. record. Yeah. And a lot of my friends and close friends agree with me. They're like, you really need to do that. I'm in a better position in life now, mm -hmm. career wise. It just feels right, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to make a record called Reconnect coming up in 2024. And I'm going to use all, it'll be the same sort of technique. I'm going to get my new heroes on it. People I've met since then, wow, you right. know, maybe I can persuade Lewis Cole to play on it, or maybe I can persuade Thundercat to play on it. I don't know. We'll see what yeah. happens. It, it's, a, it's an maybe open Maybe you camp. can get both of them. I want to hear maybe that I'll get together. Hey, Wait. maybe I'll get Trey Gunn. There you go. There you go. See? <laughs> um, but we're, we're but send um, this to Trey Gun. We'll see how it goes. It's so funny, man. But I but um also I'm I'm really excited to be working. Um one half of Wang Chung is Nick Feldman. We've become really good friends. He's a great guy, he's hilarious. Jack Hughes, the other half, is totally amazing, genius, genius uh musician. But I, I'm I'm super honored that Nick has enlisted me to to, to produce some of his solo stuff so i'm going to do that as well and that's going to be so fun because his music is just just resonates with me it's very it's like deep pop music almost like xtc todd rundgren mm -hmm. but but modern as well it's like it's got all the things i love and i feel like i could really dig into it man like i'm excited about that yeah we're excited about that so so that's going to be busy for me between my record and doing his record and then all the gigs I'm doing and blah, blah, blah. So, and you know, Berlin's going to probably do a lot more touring. Wang Chung will be touring. Fastball is a great band that I met when I was touring with the Goo Goo Dolls. They were, they were opening for us at the time. And we just, we just maintained friendships and now I'm playing with them. So, you know, uh, it's going to be super exciting next year. I'm super, super psyched. I love it. Brian wants to know if you're going to do the, uh jam night on the 80s cruise this year <laughs> what's up brian uh dude i hope so i'm not gonna say anything publicly because they got tommy two-tone to do this one this year but i think i'm gonna be on the 90s cruise with fastball in 2025 and who knows if we're gonna maybe they'll get berlin back for 2025 or wang chun we don't know but i'll tell you something no matter who's doing that jam i'm gonna storm it okay <laughs> <laughs> i love it there's your answer. AJ just wrote in who works with Trey all the time um, on his label. Do you know AJ? Have you met AJ yet? I'm not sure. Anyway, and he said, we can arrange Trey. So <laughs> there's your connection. <laughs> I don't know where you came up with that. I love Trey Gunn. I mean, you know, I like I like a lot of musicians. Uh, it's hard to pick sometimes, but yeah. yeah. Um, anyway, so there, you, there awesome. you go. <laughs> um, I love it. Well, I end every stream with the same question. So here goes. And if you could give one piece of advice to a brand new gig performer user, what would you say? Uh, damn. I know. You I know, giving you a heads up on this I, one. You didn't, but it's okay. <laughs> uh, you know, get into it and like... <clears throat> Take full advantage. Use all the sounds that you never thought you could use live. That is the joy of it for me. Like, I mean, I'm a big Omnisphere, Keyscape fan. I use a lot of Arturia stuff, you know, but I just love being able to, I love being able to use anything I want at any time. That is a, that is a game changer. And I would mm -hmm. say take full advantage of the joy that that creates. Yeah. Because it will inspire you to write better music. And, and to me, I shouldn't say that better music. What I'm saying is, I, in my opinion, I work like, I kind of like the way Peter Gabriel works. He lets the sound dictate the creation. Mm -hmm. Okay. A lot of people are like, well, you can just swap out the sound later in MIDI. I don't buy that shit. Okay. You don't play a piano part and then swap it out because you know what? You're going to play something different with a different sound. Yes. All right. So the sound dictates the creation. So I would say, Take full advantage of that because that's what this gives you. Mm -hmm. That's what it gives you, in my opinion. Yeah, I know there's guys in here with way more elaborate widget, widgets and control mm -hmm. features, and that's that's a great thing. And I'm just I'm 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 at it for the simplicity of being able to play anything I want and layer it, layer any VST with any other VST, and just the setup time is so much quicker, mm -hmm. you know, to get results. So mm -hmm. yeah, yep. that's what I would do. 
<laughs> All right, man. I love it. Um, well, Dave, thanks so much for being with us. Uh, friends who are watching, um, we've got Harry Trendle coming in early January. Um, more great stuff to come. And uh, yeah, we'll see you all very soon. Thanks again, Dave. Man.